Way. I'm going to let you know that we have lots of placards spread out around the square, so if you haven't picked up a placard, oh, I got a sign, we're finished. So keep your eye out for placards if there's any free ones. And then look for the green leaflets that we're distributing. The volunteers who are wearing orange reflective vests, they have a chant sheet, and some of the chants we hope to chant today. So keep your eye out for those, and you can pick those up before we start. So hopefully we'll start in five or ten minutes. Just one last announcement, if you have been invited to be a speaker at the demonstration today, if you could please make your way to the front. We'll get all the speakers lined up before we start. Thanks. So we can fill the square and we've got a special request we've got a giant 
horizontal banner that says, Say No to War. And we need some volunteers to stand around it and to elevate it so that we can see it during the demonstration. So if anybody has got some free hands, they're not holding a placard or a banner, and they want to help us elevate this huge banner, we're just going to invite people to stand around it. We probably need about 15 or 20 people to help hold it up. And then once we've got it off the ground, everybody else can come in and surround them. That's great. So if people want to make their way in in front of the banner, there's lots of room here on this side. That way when more people arrive, we'll be able to fill the square. So keep making your way into the square towards the building. to stop the war would like to take a moment to acknowledge that our rally today takes place on the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nations land and the settlers coming together in this space it is our collective responsibility to respect and regard this land as being the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation and to demonstrate our respect for each other and for the land as we assemble here today and in all our interactions. Coalition to Stop the War, which is a citywide anti-war coalition that was founded in 2002, that's organized on a number of fronts since then. Today's demonstration is part of a pan-Canadian mobilization saying don't attack Syria, stand in solidarity with the people of Syria. It's part of an international mobilization where there are demonstrations all over the world where people are saying no to war and military intervention. Now this is significant because as many of you know, the details of this demonstration only became apparent in the last few days. And some of you I know only found out hours ago actually that this demonstration is happening. So thank you for all of you for coming today and for helping to mobilize and to spread the word. We need to build a big broad network and stay connected in the weeks and months ahead because we don't know what is in store for Syria and we want to stand in solidarity with the people of Syria. Now how today's demonstration is going to work, we're going to hope that there's no rain. We're going to hear from a number of speakers from a broad range of communities who are part of the coalition, who want to stand for peace and justice. We're going to hear from them today and the messages of solidarity they want to bring. We also want to do some chanting so that other people who aren't here, the passers-by, can hear why we're here today. So make sure you get a chant sheet. And then at the end, we want to collect some donations to support the people of Syria and especially to relieve or to mitigate the terrible situation facing refugees who are dispersed inside Syria and throughout the country. So before we introduce our first speaker, why don't we practice some chanting? Are you on for that? Never so be defeated. defeated. You ready? The people united will never be defeated. 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 All right, here's another one. And this one is going to be directed to that building across the street. We all know why we're mobilized in front of the U.S. consulate. We're sending a message to Obama, to the U.S. administration, but also to our own government, right? As people living in Canada, we have a responsibility to make sure that our government is not interfering in the lives of Syrians and interfering in the kind of future they want. So let's start off with U.S. NATO, hands off Syria. 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 Okay, let's try one more before we hear our first speaker. How this one's going to work, I'm going to say, 
one, two, three, four, and then you're going to say, we don't want your bloody war, and then I'm going to say, five, six, seven, eight, and then you're going to say, stop the killing, stop the hate, okay? So here goes, one, two, three, four, we don't want your bloody war, five, six, seven, eight, stop the killing, stop the hate, one, two, three, four. We don't want your bloody war. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the killing, stop the hate. One, two, three, four. We don't want your bloody war. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the killing, stop the hate. One more time. One, two, three, four. We don't want your bloody war. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the killing, stop the hate. All right, thank you everybody. We're going to do lots more chanting before the demonstrations over today, but I'm going to turn now to our first speakers. He's the president of the Toronto and York Region Labour Council. He's a longtime trade union activist, a peace activist, a founding member of the Toronto Coalition Stop the War, and has helped mobilize massive support from the trade union movement for all the mobilizations for peace and justice in the last 10 years. So please welcome John Cartwright from Toronto and York Labour Council. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I'm here on behalf of our Labour Council that represents 195,000 women and men that work in every sector of our economy. At this event, because we know one thing, that war is not the answer. That the horrific reality that exists today in Syria, the loss of life, the tragic loss of life as that country spirals down into civil war, will not be solved by military invention by the U.S. or any other Western power. War is not the answer. We're pleased to see that the Parliament of the United Kingdom turned down the attempt by David Cameron to drive the England into this war. And the news said it was because Cameron tried to move in haste. That's not the real reason why the majority in Parliament voted against it. Because it was the wrong thing to do. Because after we saw the crime against humanity of the invention by the American intelligence community that there were weapons of mass destruction to trigger the invasion of Iraq and the hundreds of thousands of lives lost, nobody in this world believes the US when they say we have evidence. The vast majority of Canadians and everybody else believes that the U.S. and the British regime that wanted to move forward and the French regime that wanted to move forward with military invention is about geopolitics, is about saving lives. And our interest is in saving lives. Our interest is in bringing peaceful solution to civil war, to respect human rights. When that invasion in Iraq was being planned, humankind rose up. Our labor movement was at the front lines of these mass demonstrations of tens of thousands of us in Toronto and Montreal and every other major country, city in this world, mm -hmm. saying no to that invasion. Well, the values that informed that resistance to war then continue to inform the labor movement's view of this current crisis. There may be evidence of gas, there's tragic loss of lives, but ramping up military in intervention and invasion will have unintended consequences that will cost many, many more lives. As Canadians, we have to stand up also to our own government. And in spite of the fact that Mr. Harper and Baird have been rattling the saber, have been trying to glorify militarism in war in our country, we as Canadians have to have the courage to say we reject that role for Canada. Canada should be a peacemaker, never a war maker. Thank you very much, sisters and brothers. U.S. NATO, hands off Syria! 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 U.S. NATO, hands
NATO, hands up Syria, U.S. NATO, hands up Syria, U.S. NATO, hands up Syria, U.S. NATO, hands up Syria. Our next speaker, sisters and brothers, is a representative from Vicky Obedkov, who's a United Church minister, who is representing Christian activists here today. She's going to say a few words and talk about why she's in solidarity with our demonstration. So please welcome Reverend Vicki Obedkov from the United Church. Thank you. I bring you greetings from many United Church of Canada members who are here with you today. We call for justice and peace and respect for human rights in Syria and everywhere. We do not want a military intervention. I bring you greetings also from one of our partners in the Middle East, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land. And the bishop, Reverend Manun, says this. Oh, sorry, you can't, something's... Can you hear me? You can hear me now. Yeah. All right. I bring greetings from one of our partner Christian churches in the Holy Land and in Jordan, the Evangelical um, Lutheran Church, who calls for diplomacy, political solutions, not military intervention from the West. I call upon Mr. Obama. You have not pointed, painted yourself into a corner. You can get out of this corner by choosing a path of words, not war, of diplomacy and politics, but not choosing U.S. national security interests over humanitarian interests. What are these long-term interests? There are many politics going on there I don't understand, but I know this. In the last 15 years, there's been nine Western military attacks on Arab and Muslim nations. This is wrong. Shame. I know this. After the attack on Libya, now it's just civil war and groups fighting each other. Shame. This is not security. After Iraq, now it's civil war and there's more destruction there. The use of chemical weapons by any party is never right. It is always wrong. However, we do not know who are using these weapons. Let the United Nations do its work. Let the parliaments of our world debate. But we want to be with the people of Syria. Let them find their solutions and let us give humanitarian aid and diplomacy. It's a serious situation, but bombing Syria and unleashing cruise missiles will not help the Syrian people. So I just hope and pray that today our gracious source of life will be with people. I hope the United States does not attack Syria. We call everybody to the, pa the table of serious dialogue and we call and stand with all Syrians of goodwill. Thank you. The Board of Directors of the Canadian Arab Federation and a PhD candidate in international relations. I should let you know that the Canadian Arab Federation is also a founding member of the Toronto Coalition to Stop the War and part of the national leadership of the Canadian Peace Alliance and represents Arab Canadians since 1967 right across the Canada. So right across Canada. So please join me in welcoming Rod Ayad. Good afternoon. First, thank you to the Canadian Peace Alliance and the Toronto Coalition to Stop the War for standing up once again against a, war in, a foreign intervention in the Arab world. Unfortunately, we are here doing this too often. In the year 2000, we all stood here during the Second Intifada, we were all Palestine. In 2003, we were all Iraq. In 2006, we were all Lebanon. In 2009, we were all Gaza. In 2011, we all stood with our Egyptian brothers and our Syrian brothers and our Libyan brothers and our Bahraini brothers. Today, in 2013, we are all Syria. We are all standing for... We stand for the violence to cease. From Morocco to Yemen for the violence to cease in the Arab world. 
enough is enough. No more need for foreign intervention. No need for America's missiles. And as the British showed, there's no need for the British airplanes. There's no need from tro for troops from France. We will handle our own internal politics. The Arab people will stand united. The day will come when we will stand united. And the Canadian Arab Federation, long before I was born, stood to unite this community. And today we are fighting for the violence to cease, for the Western world to step out and to let us handle our own internal politics. In the United Kingdom, democracy spoke. For the first time in a long time, a political entity respected democracy. It was not because Cameron pushed too far, too far or too fast. It was because the people of England stood up and said, no, we will not be dragged in again. And today the headline said that John Kerry was trying to sell the attack to the people of the United States. With all due respect, Mr. Secretary of State, it is not your job to tell the people how to think, it is your job to listen to the people. Yeah. It is a political issue. It needs a political dialogue. The Syrian people, the Arab people will come together and we will solve our own problems. We don't need more missiles dropping on our children. We don't need more planes and drones flying over our heads. It'll come to an end, and it needs to come to an end politically. And one day in the future, we will stand together right here. We will celebrate the end of the occupation in Iraq, the end of the occupation in Palestine, the end of the eternal conflicts that are troubling our people throughout our countries, that are being provoked by Western leaders world leaders, self-proclaimed world leaders. We stand for a united Syria, the violence to cease in every part of the Arab world, and to come together, not in protest, not in despair, but to get, come together in celebration of a one day free Arab world, where we could all return home with our heads high, and visit our families, visit our roots, and stand and live in peace and in just society and in civil society growing throughout the whole Arab world. So again, we stand together to say no to the war in Syria, say no to attacking any further Arab states, and for a united and strong and just Arab world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rod, for speaking on behalf of CAF. As Rod said, there has already been massive opposition in NATO countries around the world. More than half the public in the United States already opposes military intervention. A majority of people in the UK oppose intervention. And as we just heard, one of the reasons there's so much skepticism about the idea of evidence of we weapons of mass destruction is the history of being lied to about weapons of mass destruction and the destructive wars that were launched that have literally killed if not hundreds of thousands of people millions of people as a result of those destructive wars and so one of the chants that we came up with that recognizes that goes like this they lied about Afghanistan they lied about Iraq they try to start another war so we say don't attack you ready can we do that again they lied about Afghanistan, they lied about Iraq, they tried to start another war, so we say, don't attack! They lied about Afghanistan, they lied about Iraq, they tried to start another war, so we say, don't attack! They lied about Afghanistan, they lied about Iraq, they tried to start another war, so we say, don't attack! So we say, 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 war and occupation in Afghanistan. She's also part of the national leadership of the Canadian Peace Alliance and has spoken internationally about the need for peace and justice in Afghanistan and around the world. 
So please join with me in welcoming Soraya Sahar. Thank you all for being here today. I'm here as your Afghan sister to show support for my brothers and sisters in Syria. I know the, co the consequences of foreign intervention, occupation, and war. I also know the consequences of civil war and being ruled by tyrannical government. For this reason, I'm here to say, hands off Syria! Hands off Syria! Hands off Syria! Hands off Syria! who can solve Syria's problems are the people of Syria. In a press conference yesterday, the U.S. Secretary of the State, John Kerry, said about Syria, and I quote, We will not repeat that moment. He was talking about Iraq. He called it a moment. He didn't even have enough respect to call it for what it actually was. A mistake, a catastrophe, a crime. One million dead in Iraq. Tens of thousands of dead in Afghanistan. What happened in these countries was not a moment. What's happening in Syria now is not a moment. This is their home. This is their lives. This is their future. I stood against U.S.-led wars for my people in Afghanistan, for my brothers and sisters in Iraq and in Libya, and now for my brothers and sisters in Syria. But I am also here to speak on behalf of a new movement of anti-war voices. Today, today we have the combined efforts of both former soldiers and those whose countries they once occupied. I'm now going to read a statement that was written and signed by Iraqis, by Afghans, and by war veterans. It's called no military intervention in Syria, a statement from Frontlines International. To our governments and world leaders around the world today, we are hearing the voices of millions as they say no to a U.S.-led military intervention in Syria. This will only grow as people march in the streets today in an international day of action against war that the preemptive opposition to an intervention in Syria has already gathered such numbers as a testament of two things. It is at once a sign that the world no longer believes in the United States' stated reasons for military intervention. And is secondly indicative of the resilience of those opposing military intervention time and time again. These voices will not go away. And now we lend our voices to theirs from a new quarter. We are Frontlines International. Our opposition to the latest phase in the Imperial program stems from our own collective experience as both occupied and occupier. If you will not listen to the public, who by majority are in clear opposition to this intervention, then we ask you to please listen to our voices. We have witnessed firsthand the consequences of military invasion and war in Iraq and Afghanistan, both as civilians and soldiers. We cannot watch in so tragically short a period of time history so blindly repeating itself. 
we stand in solidarity with the Syrian people and their right to self-determination. We stand against a U.S.-led military intervention in Syria. We condemn the incessant threats of attacks on Syria that are illegal in accordance with the U.N. Charter. All members shall refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of any force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state. We reject an expanded war in Syria that will most likely result in regional and global war with, the un with uncontrollable consequences. We do not recognize, we do not recognize the U.S. as a rightful power to police the world and instead point to the moral, political, and economic bankruptcy of this government, this country's foreign policy since the beginning of the war on terror and beyond. We call for a universal standard to be applied to the use of chemical weapons and encourage all countries, especially the U.S., the greatest producer and distributor of chemical weapons in the world to refrain from using weapons such as white phosphorus, napalm, cluster bombs, and depleted uranium in any instance. We ask for a recognition of the record of U.S. humanitarian war and its inability to secure nation building. We cite examples of Iraq, Afghanistan, and Libya as case studies where their outside interference has resulted in governments that were neither stable nor legitimate. We ask the world leaders to diligently consult with public opinion in both the U.S., Britain, and other NATO countries to plainly see a wide consensus on non-intervention in Syria. Instead, a plurality of the public requests humanitarian aid to be sent to Syria. We warn that escalated conflict in Syria will likely result in regional and potentially global instability with uncontrollable consequences. As former U.S. intelligence analysts, we point out that the United States movements today have been typical of poor intelligence collection and government officials relying on faulty intelligence, with fact-checking grossly disregarded. The staging of warships, the show of force, the use of weapons in civilian populated areas, and altogether gross violations, gross violation of human rights, and will only result in more civilian deaths. This is not the solution to the crisis in Syria. This is an escalation of violence and a blatant act of disregard for human life. We ask every single person who values life to stand with us and to speak against the invasion of, of Syria. As Iraqis and Afghans, we say to you, democracy is not an export. Democracy can only ferment from within. We have witnessed the blowback of this in our own countries. As veterans, we say to you, no bombs we drop will bring freedom. No killing will prevent slaughter. No military force. The ultimate invasion of Syria's sovereignty and right to self-determination will bring stability. We have seen these arguments made before and they are lies. U.S. NATO, hands up Syria. 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 Thank you, Soraya, for that moving speech. And brothers and sisters, we want to send a message to Ottawa and to our government that we don't want an attack on Syria, but we also want to send a message of solidarity to the people of Syria, 
and to Syrian people or people of Syrian descent or members of the Syrian community here in Toronto and across Canada. And are there any Syrians with us today? So welcome to the Syrian community that's here today. And before we hear our next speaker who is going to speak as a representative of the Syrian community, we should warmly welcome all our brothers and sisters who are here today from the Syrian community. So I'm going to introduce a chant that's not on the sheet, but it's one that we use in the anti-war demonstrations and the anti-globalization demonstrations. And it goes like this. So, 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 solidarité, which of course is French for solidarity. Solidarité. So, 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 solidarité. All of you coming here to show your solidarity and support. And to, and to represent your your uh, position uh, against terrorists, against uh, the aggression of the imperialism uh, on the top of, uh, of them, uh, the USA aggression. I would like uh, to cover uh, quickly two topics uh, here. Uh, the, first, uh, the first one is the war on Syria by the USA and NATO. Actually, the war on Syria and USA and NATO didn't start now and didn't like uh, uh, triggered now by uh, uh, chemical weapon, I, uh, they uh, claim. The war has been two years. Two years of fighting against Syria by re reactionary regime like uh, Qatar and Saudi Arabia. Sending weapons, sending, <laughs> sending weapons, sending even artillery, and sending gas uh, and chemical weapons to, uh, to terrorists. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, they support them all and all means by opening thousands of kilometers with the Turkey border to get all these tourists from all over the world infiltrated into the Syrian land. Yes, at the beginning there was some sense of revolution and people went to the street for some, uh, for some uh, uh, democratic needs and we all were in support of that. But it didn't take a long time, it takes only two weeks to start to raise their uh, sectarian um, uh, sectarian chant, like uh, Alawi goes to, uh, to to the grave and Christian go to Beirut, it didn't take too, lot too long to reveal what what the real what the real uh, purpose of their uh, uh, the, the, uh, of the leaders of uh, uh, whom trying to manipulate the, the the people. Now those people that went into the street at the first time. They're not in the street anymore. They're not fighting anymore because they're hijacked by terrorism. Terrorism that's supported by USA indirectly and by, by its puppet regime, Saudi Arabia and Qatar. And it's, clear, and it's clear that every place you go, there's a war. You find counter-revolution counter revolution with, with, with American troops. How that happened? You go to Afghanistan, the allies with, with the American ways that Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda and USA forces were together fighting in the same, in the same place. They've seen that happen. They create a new chaos. The first time they, they, uh, they created some massacre and they complained that the, the government. And, and it's amazing that every time the government went on the ground, that, that, that things happen. The, the government has no benefit at no time of such a crime to happen. And we all against this crime that we know the forces that create this crime. How do you think that country has Al-Qaeda and those kind of crime doesn't happen? How do you close your eyes and say, oh, the Syrian government ha did it? It's, a, it's, it's a, like, it's, it's a typical action of, or typical uh, behavior of Al-Qaeda, a typical behavior of the American forces all over the world they went. They went to, 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 to Japan and they put a nuclear weapon there. They dropped a nuclear weapon. They do, they do too many things to, to, to Vietnam and other countries. And Fallujah and deployed, uh, deployed uh, uranium uh, bombs. 
They are the criminals. They are the, the, the people, the, they are the, the party that they create all chaos. Yeah, we don't forget about Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So how come those people are dying for peace or for, for, for people that are dying from chemical weapons in Syria? How could those people, they care? We care. We, the Syrian, care. The Syrian Arab army care. The Syrian Arab army will never do such things like that. Uh, uh, there's some uh, journalists, they went to the place that the, the crime committed and they, uh, uh, they have uh, interviews people and they got, got this interview by, uh, by uh, some uh, very, very recognized uh, uh, journalist. They said that a lot of people, they die one day before, before they announce it. And the reason why some of them from the rebels, they die in the tunnel because they have the, the chemical weapon in the tunnel and they don't know how to use them, and they cause that, uh, that thing. This, this part of the investigation is happening now by real people, talking to real people, even the parents of the rebels. Now, now the American, they don't want to hear the story. They want to, they want to fight even before they, they hear what the result of the investigation by UN uh, and, and, uh, inspectors. And that, that tells you that this is our real enemy. That's uh, the party that divided people in Syria or play on dividing people in Syria and make this uh, conflict instead of having a peace agreement or if, uh, instead of having some kind of settlement, they, they, they still ignited by saying no negotiation with Bashar Assad. Why no negotiation? If you want your country to be peace, you negotiate with everybody. If you really want that. But the Americans, they don't want peace. They did it. They, they did it. And every single country, every single country, they have some conflict. If you want to ignite conflict, you can ignite. But that's not, not, not a peace. That's not a good thing. It's a devil thing. And that's what the USA government do. Thank you. Hartman, Hartman, we want peace. Not another war in the Middle East. Harper, Harper, we want peace, not another war in the Middle East. Harper, Harper, we want peace, not another war in the Middle East. Harper, Harper, we want peace, not another war in the Middle East. Toronto, and a member of the Lebanese community and Hamilton. Please welcome Dr. Atif Kabersi. Brothers and sisters, we live in very strange times. If it weren't for the many thousands dead and the thousands that would die, it would be comical. The United States is going to war on the side of Al-Qaeda. They fight them in Afghanistan and they stand by them in Syria. They're going to bring democracy to Syria in alliance with the most archaic and the most decrepit regimes, the Qataris and the Saudis. They are upset about mass destruction and weapons of mass destruction and it's the United States, the only country that used it on the civilians in Japan and is ready to use it on other people and continue to use it. They want to bring peace and to bring a solution and they're stoking the fire by throwing more oil on the fire. You cannot bring peace from the other end of a gun or the turret of a tank you bring it with justice, you bring it with negotiations, you bring it with political settlements, you don't bring it with bombs and missiles, and you don't bring it by trying to ram into people a solution they do not accept. Yeah. Talking about oil, this is a war about greed. This is now a war that has started or likely to start in a week's time or because of some action that had happened. This is a war that had been planned by the people in the Pentagon and in the NATO headquarters for 10 years. They want to subjugate the people. They don't want anybody to stand up for justice, for freedom, and for representing the people. They want to mute voices like yours. They want to silence people who call for peace and for justice. We know, we all know very well that there is no military solution to this ugly situation. 
There is no one of us who's happy about the thousands killed in Syria. They're all our brothers and sisters. Every drop of blood in that region is a blood of ours. But why is Arab blood so wantingly spilled? Why is it so easy for Arab blood to be spilled on every occasion? Whether in Yemen, whether in Libya, whether in Lebanon, whether in Palestine. Why is it that always the United States relies on the most apartheid regime for its information? What they're saying is the pretext and is the news and the declassified secrets is in the, in the Israeli press on daily basis. The Israelis have been saying that they have intercepted these false and they have every ulterior motive to lie about it. If you want to bring peace to the region, you can. Bring food, bring justice, bring freedom, bring support to the people, not bombs, not missiles, not any of these war destructive things. From Iraq to Palestine, occupation is a crime. From Iraq to Palestine, occupation is a crime. From Iraq to Palestine, occupation is a crime. From Iraq to Palestine, U.S. NATO, hands off Syria. U.S. NATO, hands off Syria. U.S. NATO. Palestinians, but for all oppressed people. And so I'd like to invite Monera Kipnoto to say a few words of solidarity on behalf of Palestine House. Please welcome Monera. Hi, everybody. I will be so short today. Uh, just a few words. First of all, I want to thank the Canadian Peace Alliance and the uh, Stop the War Movement and all the organizations. And first of all, I want to thank you all for this amazing event, for this amazing protest against this building. The war is always dirty. There is no war that brings justice and peace. War always brings destruction. Be, uh, brings more widows, more orphans, more dead, more killing. And the war on Syria is also against the sovereignty of Syria, the sovereignty of a nation. And we are against any war, against any nation in this world. As I said, the war will not bring peace. It did not bring peace to Iraq. Millions of refugees, millions of dead children, millions of destruction to the infrastructure of the country, and so on and so on. It did not bring peace to Libya. It did not bring peace to Afghanistan. And it will never bring peace to Syria. We hear, and I urge you to continue the pressure on your government to prevent this attack from happening. It will not meet our concerns. Our concern is to bring peace and justice to the Syrian people. And this will happen only when the Syrian people sit together and solve their own problem, not with shelling them and bombing them with drones and bombs and military strikes. Finally, I just want to remind this building and the people of the United States that Martin Luther King has a dream for peace and justice. He did not, he did not have a drone. Shame on you, Obama. Shame on you, Obama. Hands off Syria. Hands of 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 Syria. Thank you.
serving member of the Toronto Coalition to Stop the War, has many other hats he wears in the movement for peace and social justice. Too many hats for me to mention here, but he's going to do an important fundraising pitch for us next. Because we talked about what we can do. First of all, we want to show our solidarity with the people of Syria and help mitigate the disastrous situation facing refugees by raising money on that front. We also want to cover the expenses. The movement, thank you. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. We are. We are the people in Canada, in UK, in Russia, in the US who were demonstrated by the hundreds of thousands yesterday and today saying no to war. We are the people with the people of Syria for peaceful and civilized solution outside any intervention, military or otherwise, by the regime of donkeys and monkeys in the Arab Gulf states. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we are against terrorism, and that's why we are here, to tell this house of terror, we condemn your use of mass destruction in Vietnam. We condemn your use of mass destruction in the Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We condemn your use of nuclear and mass destruction weapon like phosphorus in Bakuba and in Iraq. We do condemn you, condemn you for using weapon of mass destruction in Afghanistan. We condemn you for supporting the illegal state of Israel for using cluster bombs against people of Palestine and Lebanon. So brothers and sisters, we are for freedom, they are for terrorism. Don't let them fool you. As the previous speaker says, 50 years ago, Martin Luther King says, I have a dream. What this criminal in the White House today said, I have a drone, I have the right to kill people without due justice and without due prosecution. This is, this is the house of terror, not the leaders of the democracy. So brothers and sisters, I don't want to take much of your time, but because we are the ordinary people, standing up with ordinary people of Syria, of Iraq, of Palestine, of Afghanistan, and every other place. We need to get together, and we need to have solidarity. And we ask, and we have to prevent that. Our people in Iraq are being killed daily, and we have to get together to stop that. Our people in Afghanistan have no peace, no democracy, and no freedom. And they are being killed every day. And the same in Palestine. So brothers and sisters, somehow we're lucky. We are here. We don't have bombs getting down on our heads, on our houses. We have a job. We have a ways to say, we are with you, people of Syria. Solidarity with the people of Syria. And again, the people united will never be defeated. 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 The anti-war movement, and she's going to bring greetings of solidarity from the labor movement and steelworkers. Please welcome Carolyn Egan. And I'm uh, very proud to be standing here with you today, shoulder to shoulder with brothers and sisters who have come together to say no to the attack on Syria, no to the United States. And what we are wanting to say here as a trade unionist is that many of you are aware unions in this country were in the streets against the war in Iraq, we were in the streets against the war in Afghanistan, and we are proud, as I said, to be in the streets again with you today. And there are similar rallies such as this taking place all around the world. And you've seen representatives from faith communities, from unions, from community organizations, from 
organizations representing the people of the Middle East who have felt so strongly in the last number of years the wrath of governments like the United States, Britain, and Afghanistan, Canada. And that's why we are saying to the U.S. consulate across the road, we are saying, listen to your people. The American people do not want to go to war against the Syrian people. Everyone is telling us that in cities across the United States. John Kerry, Barack Obama, listen to your people. War is not the answer. War has never been the answer. The governments of France, of Canada, of the United States, don't care a whit about the people of Syria. It is their own economic and political interests that are guiding them, and we have to show the breadth and the strength of this global movement saying we refuse to accept an attack on Syria. It is not in the interest of the Syrian people, and it's not in the interest of people in the United States, Canada, or anywhere else in the world. And I want to mention, today in this crowd, we have resistors who came up who decided that they would not fight in the Vietnam War that the U.S. put forward. We have resistors here who said they would not fight in the Iraq War, and we applaud them for their courage. They are standing with us today, and we ask the government of Canada to give them refuge in this country. So we stand with you, brothers and sisters. We will do all we can to stop any attack on the people of Syria. Thank you very much. Hands up, Syria! U.S. NATO! Hands up, Syria! We hear from our final speaker. I also wanted to make a statement of solidarity in support of John Grayson and Tarek Lubani, who are two Canadian citizens who have been detained in Egypt for more than three weeks now. And there is a campaign that all of us here need to be a part of. The Toronto Coalition to Stop the War, the Canadian Peace Alliance, and dozens of organizations across this country, indeed around the world, and literally tens of thousands of people are calling for the immediate release, the safe and immediate release of Tarek Lubani and John Grayson. And just so you know, John Grayson is a York University film professor, a leading activist in the BDS movement here in Toronto and across the country, breaking the siege of Gaza. And Tarek Lubani is a London-based physician who has been organizing solidarity and training Palestinian doctors in emergency room surgery. And they were actually en route to Gaza when they were detained and held in Cairo. And so we encourage all of you to look up TarekandJohn.com online to find out what you can do to put pressure on the Egyptian embassy in Ottawa and the consul in Montreal to demand that they be released. And there will be a meeting happening with the prosecutor in Cairo on Monday or Tuesday. And we need to continue flooding the diplomatic offices with messages of solidarity saying we are watching and we want them released. They are allies in the struggle for peace and justice for Palestinians and for all oppressed people. And so the Toronto Coalition to Stop the War wants to express a sol solidarity with John and Tarek and to call for the release. Day of action, as I mentioned, there are 15 demonstrations right across the country that we know of that are happening. Please join with me in welcoming Sid Lacombe on behalf of the Canadian Peace Alliance. Thank you very much, sisters and brothers, for coming out here today. As James just mentioned, there's demonstrations happening all across the country over the course of this weekend. There was a fantastic demonstration last night when 50 people surrounded Rob Nicholson's office in uh, Niagara Falls. He's the de de defense minister here in Canada, demanding that he say no to a war on Syria. There's demonstrations happening over the course of the next couple of days in Vancouver, Victoria, Edmonton, Calgary, Winnipeg, Regina, Halifax, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, Hamilton, and all across the country where Canadians are standing up and saying, we do not want your bloody war. There are those who are asking us why it is that we're still marching in Canada, even though Stephen Harper has announced that there will not be a Canadian military component to an attack on Syria. 
We've heard this before, however, from Stephen Harper. This is a man who has lied to us a dozen times over the course of his reign in Canada around specific issues around war. Four times he said that Canada would not extend the mission in Afghanistan, and four times he lied, he turned around, and he sent more Canadian troops into Afghanistan to oppress and to occupy the people there. We are also standing here, so we do not trust Stephen Harper when he says that he's not going to contribute militarily to the war on Syria. We know that this is a government that wanted to go to war in Iraq, despite the fact that the entire world knew that it was a war based on a pack of lies, but he wanted to support it. And he is now providing political support to the Obama government, the Obama administration, to support their drive to bomb Syria. We are also standing here across from the U.S. consulate, as we know, to highlight the fact that the biggest terrorist in the world today is the United States of America, is the U.S. government. And they are the people who are going to kill innocent Syrians. They say in retaliation for killing. What a bizarre logic. They're saying that they're so appalled by the killing of civilians that they want to kill masses of civilians. This makes no sense whatsoever, but it is the logic of the U.S. government, successive U.S. governments, and we need to stand up and stand in opposition. It is absolutely ridiculous that they think they are going to improve the situation for the Syrian people. They have 2,000 Tomahawk missiles based in the Mediterranean Sea and in areas around there, ready to be launched at Syria at any moment. You know who benefits from that? It's interesting. Raytheon benefits from that. Raytheon is the corporation that makes the cruise missiles. Their stock prices have spiked by 20% over the course of the last couple of weeks because they figure that those missiles are actually going to be used in Syria, which means the American government's going to have to buy more. They're making money off of this. They're the ones who want this to happen. And we don't have to look far. We do not have to look far into our collective past as a globe, as a world, and as a people to understand exactly what this alleged responsibility to protect actually represents. We can look at Libya. Remember Libya, there was announcements made that uh, Gaddafi was about to kill civilians and so what did the Western countries do? They developed what they called a no-fly zone that turned into a bombing zone and they murdered 30,000 people. How it is that they think that is the best way to protect the civilian life in Libya is absurd. In Afghanistan, tens of thousands have been killed by a, more than a decade's worth of brutal occupation. The numbers in Iraq are almost unfathomable. Over the course of the past 20 years, the United States is responsible for murdering more than a million people in Iraq. And they have the gall to stand up and call anyone else a terrorist. That's the terrorists. That's why we're going to be out here today. That's why we're going to be out here every single time they decide they're going to launch that terror on the world. Sisters and brothers, we need you to be part of this movement. If you have not already discovered the Canadian Peace Alliance online, find our website, find our Facebook group, sign up so you can get the updates as this is progressing. We know that this is only the beginning of what the Western powers have in mind. The United States is looking at Syria because they want to attack as a stepping stone as well to another goal, which is eventually to attack Iran. This banner that is lined up in front here is a testament to exactly how brutal this government is. This banner marched with 80,000 people on February 15, 2003. At the time, it said, don't attack Iraq. Six months ago, when it looked like they were going to launch the attack on Iran, we covered the queue with an N so that it says, don't attack Iran. This time around, we covered that last word and wrote in Syria. How many more times are we going to have to alter this banner before they stand up, or before we stand up around the world and they actually listen to their people? The people of the United States don't want this attack. The people of the UK don't want this attack. The people of Canada do not want this attack. So we're going to stand here and we're going to make sure that they hear loud and clear. One, two, three, four. We don't want your bloody war. One, two, three, four. We don't want your bloody war. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the killing. Stop the hate. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the killing. Stop the hate. 
Thank you very much, sisters and brothers. Keep looking at the Canadian Peace Alliance material. Come out to the next rallies. Unfortunately, we may have to be out here again. Talk to you soon. Thanks, sisters and brothers. Anything but warfare. Anything but warfare. Anything but warfare. It's not a thing that we have to continue building these networks, but it's something that we have to do. And what's important is that we have built an infrastructure. We have built a network of activists who have been active for a long time, but there are also many more people always getting involved. And that's the key thing. We have to think about who are the thousands of people we know who are not here today, but who agree with us. They don't want to see a war against Syria, but they don't necessarily feel confident to come to a demonstration. And so the task that we have to take away today is to think about how are we having the conversation that we had here today amongst ourselves, among several hundred people, how are we going to take this message of solidarity and of peace and of opposing war and of supporting justice and dignity for the people of Syria? How are we going to take these conversations to the people we work with, our friends and our family members and think about how we're going to bring them into these coalitions and how we can support those struggles? So I'd encourage you, all of you, to look up online the Canadian Peace Alliance, to find it on Facebook to like it, to share it, to make sure that we're all connected and to make sure that we're building a permanent network for peace and justice so that when we have to mobilize again, we're prepared, we're more organized and that we can actually stop the warmongers from prosecuting more wars. Maybe for 10 or 15 minutes or longer if you want to do it, we would, thought we would take the sizable crowd that we have here and move to the sidewalk just on the west edge of this square and stretch out as long as we can, along the edge of University Avenue with our placards, with our signs, with our banners, and we want to do some chanting because there's lots of traffic that's going to be going by. Yeah. 
Occupation is a crime. 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 Occupation is a crime.